Hey everyone, my name is Nick and welcome to my channel. After driving over 20,000 miles on my Tesla Model Y performance, I'm ready to share with you nine tips that can maximize and increase the range on your Tesla and also share with you one significant change that can increase the range on your Tesla by as much as 10%, particularly for Model Y performance owners. Starting out with the first tip, uh, this really starts at the beginning of your day, and that's to precondition your car. The Tesla phone app will allow you to precondition the car to a set schedule time. So if you are gonna leave tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. or something like that, you can precondition the car by checking one button on the Tesla app, and what that'll do is while the car is still plugged into the wall, it will precondition the battery to be at the desired heat that it wants to so that when you unplug, it's not wasting energy trying to heat the battery, but rather it's doing that at its source while it's still plugged into the wall. This setting will initiate properly the very beginning step of leaving your house with a warm battery so that the battery itself does not have to deplete itself to generate heat and warm the battery up to a specific temperature. Precondition your battery. In the city, the best way to maximize the range in your Tesla is to master regenerative braking. Let me show you how. This is the EV's most advantageous uh, perspective in terms of range. You wanna learn to master this because this can actually uh, have a huge effect towards maximizing and increasing your range. The best way to do it is to get a feel for your car, how aggressive it's gonna apply the regenerative braking and see if you can really time it. So timing is the biggest issue here, and that's what the mastery comes in, is you're gonna to need to time your distance between the stop sign relative to your speed, and if you can stop completely without having to use the brakes, well, this is gonna maximize your range. So coming up to the stop sign here, right now, taking my foot off the pedal, look at that. I'm just a tad bit over the line, but I've almost perfected that. I didn't use the brakes whatsoever, which means that I made the full use out of the regenerative braking. So coming up to another stop sign here, going almost 35 miles per hour and release my foot off the pedal. See, I did this a little bit too early. So then I kind of feather the brake a little, the pedal, and then release when I get to the end. And I didn't use my brakes at all. And 99% of my driving in this car I don't use the brakes. Braking is now an emergency uh, tool instead of an everyday necessary tool. I hardly use my brakes and I'm actually annoyed when I do have to use my brakes because that just means I didn't do something right with my driving. All right, so some of you guys who are experienced driving this car already knew that, but I bet you didn't think about this next one. It also has to do with regenerative braking. And that next tip is do not aggressively use your regenerative braking. Using the motor's kinetic energy and reverting that into electric energy. And so your motor is doing that magic. But when it does that, it's generating a lot of heat in the process. If you wanna make the absolute most out of your range, you're gonna wanna ease into your regenerative braking. And so what I mean by that is if you know you have a stop sign coming up or you know you have to make a turn like this situation right here. Well, I'm already gently taking my foot off the pedal. You can see that that green meter is not ex like very forcefully being applied here like I was in the previous stops. You're easing your foot off the pedal and the motors don't have to work as aggressively to apply the regenerative braking. This means less heat being wasted, which in return means less energy being wasted. And for this fourth step, this relates to climate control settings, and this actually has less of an effect as you might have thought. Tesla is a really, really efficient car, and it's able to utilize that heat pump to spend as least amount of energy as possible to heat the cabin, and it also does this other fun stuff with um, utilizing the motor's excess heat to warm the battery. I'm not sure if this actually goes inside the cabin itself, but the heat pump and the distribution of heat with the motor to the battery is all really, really efficient and designed to uh, reduce the amount of battery that's spent on actually heating, and this includes your cabin. Of course, the most efficient way to heat yourself, uh, if we're talking about the winter, is to utilize the seat warmers and also the steering heat because you're heating yourself um, through thermal contact rather than having to heat the ambient air, which takes a lot more energy. So what about maximizing range in terms of highway driving? Well, 
This one actually applies to all vehicles and that's reduce your total speed. When we start to get above 70 miles per hour, it really starts to magnify how much wind resistance is on your car. And high wind resistance means that you have to spend a lot more energy to overcome that and have your car push beyond 70, 80, whatever miles it is, stay within the speed limit. But generally, if you're able to keep it 70 or lower, that's a good tactic to save energy and uh, really maximize your range. This next tip is for supercharging. Whenever you can, when you're on a road trip, try to pick a level three supercharger and try to arrive at the level three supercharger with a low state of charge. I've been on a lot of road trips with this car and I found that when you have the battery below 30%, you're generally able to take full advantage of the V3 superchargers, which have a total output of 250 kilowatt hours. I've noticed that when the car is at 30% or lower, it's able to reach those high um, output levels. But as the car exceeds 30, it starts to get into 40, 50 for sure, you're not gonna get 250 kilowatt hours of maximum uh, charging speed that is given to you on these v3 superchargers so what that means is if you want to maximize your range on a road trip don't show up to a level 3 supercharger with 40 percent power because you are not going to take advantage of that fast charging what you want to do is kind of skip that charger go to the next one that's a v3 show up there with a low percentage of charge what I mean by that is if you can stay at 10% or lower when you arrive into a level three supercharger, your car is gonna be able to make use of that full 250 kilowatt speed and that in exchange is gonna mean less time you spend per supercharger. And so that leads me into my next tip, which is more of an advanced tip. And I say that because you really need to gauge your car and know what kind of battery percentage you're gonna arrive at your destination in relation to your speed and the weather conditions outside because they all play a significant role in your range. And this tip is don't always listen to what the car says in the maps. You see, the car tends to play very conservatively when you put into the maps where you want to end up in your destination. It will pick the superchargers on routes and it will make sure that you're not stranded. And when it does this, it plays on the safe side. If you want to maximize your range, you won't necessarily play on the safe side and you'll use kind of your own experience to deduce how far you think the car is going to go. I don't want to scare you because I do this all the time and I'm never stuck. If you're going to go not as fast as uh, the car thinks you're going to go. If you're not going to go 70, 75, you're going to go more 65. Then maybe you skip that supercharger stop that the car wants you to stop in. Maybe you can make it to the next V3 supercharger and arrive there with under 10%, maybe 2%, 3%, 5% state of charge and know that you'll be able to get there at that percentage and then fully utilize that V3 supercharger's high speeds uh, in turn, meaning that you spend less time at the supercharger and more time on the road. It's kind of a little fine line and you really get, get used to it when you start to drive the car more. Okay, so this next tip, I would say to use this as your last resort. I'm not saying to do this because I don't know how it's gonna affect the car. It's probably insignificant. It's not great for the car either, but you can push the car past zero percent if you need to. And I would reserve this for emergency situations. I actually had a situation where I was in a really bad earthquake up in Eureka. It was a 6.4 magnitude earthquake and my car did not have enough charge to make it to the supercharger I needed it to. I had to go to a different one out of my way and uh, it was a little bit closer, but my car wasn't supposed to make it there. Okay, I have been at zero for a while. I still have power because I can see from that faint gray line. I have six miles left. I don't know how. Definitely going off the reserve, but this is an, an emergency, so uh, so be it. It got to a point where I was using half the power to go up that hill and it was declining really fast, so I barely made it. But now we are finally going downhill, so I'm using that regenerative braking. And um, I'll probably have about two miles to drive through the city to reach the supercharger. Woo, sketchy. I made it. This car is a trooper. Finally. So that power reserve was just dwindling super fast, but I eventually got to the top of the hill and I was able to coast down and use that regenerative braking. And I arrived into town and I drove through town to the supercharger and I was like 10 miles above 0%. And so the car was able to get there. It has that reserve. Um, don't always use that, but it's very nice to know that if you think you're at 0%, 
you're not actually at 0%. Okay, this last one is really, really exciting because I've been preaching this for a long time. This method is the number one way to immediately increase your range by as much as 10% if you have a model wide performance, and this is 18 inch rims. If you've seen any of my past videos, I've done so many tests and I've talked so much about the physics of why an 18 inch wheel is gonna give you significantly more range than the stock Model Y performance tires, which are significantly heavier. And if you haven't seen that video, go check it out because it is the best way to increase your range. If you guys found this video helpful, please give me a like and subscribe, and I will make some more videos like this informational. And uh, if you guys like camping and fun stuff like that, um, I'm a videographer and I like to go on trips and take my drone and get all these beautiful sceneries and go camp out in the middle of nowhere and have a great time. So if you wanna see those videos, Subscribe to me and I will see you guys later. Thank you.